It was really hard to pick my five favorite recipes from last year, but I think I did it. Starting off in the freezer with some tater tot hash browns. My buddy Tony at work taught me this recipe and I love, love, love it. You must try it. So, so simple. Look, you're just throwing these tater tots in the microwave for like two minutes, right? Just throw them in there frozen. Just knock the chill off of them. Put them right on your griddle. And then you just kind of form them into two little patties or however many you want to make. Now, I chopped them up after doing it a couple more times. I don't think you need to do this. That wasn't necessary. Just kind of push them into two round circles and push them down flat. Then just don't touch them like I'm doing here. So do as I say, not as I do. Right, kids? So anyways, you just push them down and then you kind of loosen them up let them cook for like six to seven minutes untouched on each side and then you give them a flip and they're just they're unbelievable i mean they're just they're crunchy on the outside they're soft on the inside it's like one big giant tater tot which is kind of like a hash brown but it's not i mean it's i don't know how to describe it other than delicious incredibly easy they're usually pre-seasoned already so you don't even have to add seasoning but you can i think i added some everything bagel seasoning to these and then i just did them with scrambled eggs and some sausage patties i mean i hate to say it but i mean i think i'll probably do this more than shredded hash browns going forward i mean i probably did it more last year so it, it was that good i'd try it next we're putting down a lot of oil for the second favorite from 2022 it's pork chop sandwich got some thick cut pork chops season them up pretty well honestly i still could have put more seasoning on there these pork chops you can really go hard with the seasoning because they can take it a lot of oil get the oil hot first then you just put them right down in there and that's how you get that beautiful color on those things is all the oil all the hot oil they just look great on the griddle once they get a nice color i went ahead and scooted them over to the side and then that oil and the drippings there, I just threw my onions right in there. Right down in there, just my white onions sliced up. I'm going to be sauteing that up with a pat of butter and all the pork chop juices and the little bits of seasoning that came off. Add a little bit of garlic in there as well. And oh, I just love sauteed onions. I mean, they're so good on the griddle. Just grilled up onions, but yeah, a little butter and garlic and do them right in the pork chop juices. And it just really just gave them an amazing amazing flavor that just really set this sandwich off my pork chops they're about 150 there i want 155 so i'm going to put them on top of the onions to continue to cook and also let the juices continue to fall on the onions while they cook and then i just domed it just kind of made like a little oven to get that last like five degrees i want toasting up my texas toast on the side here I used butter for two of them, and then I used mayo for the other two pieces of Texas toast. Um, just because I love using mayo. If you haven't seen my videos, I love toasting with mayo. I think it's easier, and I think it turns out looking great. The ones I'll show you here, after I assemble it, we're done with mayo. So let's go ahead and pull the lid off, look at our pork chops, see what we're looking at here. Oh, buddy, those are onions are cooking down, the pork chops are finishing up. There's the mayo toast. It was just, this is a Chicago sandwich. I've actually never had it in Chicago. I really, I've been there three times and I've never had it. I'm ashamed of myself, but I think I made a pretty good version at home. Put a little mustard on top of it. It's pretty simple. It's just bread, mustard, pork chop, and grilled onions. Like, that's it. But just look at the color on this pork chop, man. It's just like, oh, it's so good on the griddle. Just gets that nice sear on it. And I really like the simplicity of the sandwich, honestly. I mean, the onions came through, the mustard was great. I would highly recommend trying this one. All right, chicken Philly. We're gonna go ahead and get our peppers and onions diced up here. And I mean, a little bit of a chicken breast also diced up. I'm gonna throw in some Italian dressing and marinate it up to two hours, or at two hours or overnight. I think I did this one overnight. And this is just like, oh, this is just so good. I just, this is so good. I can't even describe to you how good this sandwich was. I did it right at the beginning of last year. So almost a year ago, exactly. And I just feel like it didn't, I wanted more people to know about it. If you missed this video, you need to make this chicken Philly because it's amazing. Put it in everything on the griddle, toss peppers and onions, salt and pepper, kind of check your chicken. Make sure you spread out these diced chicken pieces evenly. 
and then go ahead and start flipping them individually once they get cooked. There's more mayo on this soft hoagie bun. Can't go wrong with a hoagie bun for a little filly. Um, check out these chicken. Now they're ready to start flipping all of them individually. They got a good color on there. Then once they cook and the peppers and onions have sauteed down a little bit, you go ahead and mix everything together, get the double spatula going. Now we're griddling two spatulas. You're not even griddling if you don't use two spatulas at once. Then we're going to separate it out. Quickly I'll go over the kind of cheesesteak slash any hoagie type thing flip. You always, when you separate it out, you separate it into piles. The piles should be the length of your bun. That way you can top it with cheese, put the bun on top, and then do the flip. So keep this in mind for a chopped cheese, for a cheesesteak, there's the bun. Anything like that, this is the best way to do it. You leave it on the griddle, you put the cheese on top, and then you're going to flip it in there. This is some provolone cheese. We're gonna add some water. You could add a dome. I did not have it this day, so I just let the water steam that up and melt the cheese. It does a great job. So you can just watch the cheese just straight melt onto that chicken and peppers and onions. And I just kept pushing the water back up there a little bit. Let it all get nice and melty and gooey. And oh yeah, here comes the toasted bun. Man, it looks good with the mayo. Slide that bun on top spatula then is going to go underneath all of the meat well once you get the right side there then you give her a flip and oh buddy that looks good it can't even fit inside the bun it's so good more peppers and onions going down on the griddle what is going on here it's like we just love cooking peppers and onions anyways this is a little bit of malcolm reed's grande gringo seasoning with the peppers and onions some hash brown patties. We are making some breakfast tacos. That's right. Breakfast tacos. They are delicious. Highly, highly recommend this cook. I was super pleased with it. It was in my uh, 10 unhealthy video. Also, uh, 10 things. The reason I bought a flat top video. I'll link that at the end. It's great. Uh, here goes the sausage next to the peppers and onions. So that's like half a roll of sausage. Peppers and onions. The hash brown patties are in the back. You just keep flipping those. This is so, so easy. This is like a great beginner meal on the griddle. You're just cooking the sausage until there's no more pink. Mixing the peppers and onions back in, just like we did with the chicken. Except once you got it all mixed, then you add the scrambled eggs. You just pour it right on top of the sausage, peppers, and onions. They actually help keep the eggs from going everywhere. And you're just making like a big, you know, messy diner hash scramble like just a scramble with sausage and peppers and cheese and eggs and throw some of that cheese in there fold it all together make sure you got your griddle turned down so you're not burning these eggs and now that you got basically this you know filling here this little scramble you throw down your tortillas get them a nice little color on each side add cheese to each one add half of a hash brown patty to each one then we're coming through with those eggs and we're gonna fold everybody in half here just to kind of make our little breakfast taco. And oh my God, look at these things. Oh, I can't even, mm. they were just so good. Add a little bit of Cholula, love the Cholula. Definitely try these. Finally, we are making another cheese steak with more peppers and onions. It looks like all I did in 2022 is griddle peppers and onions. Uh, this is Malcolm's Grande Gringo again. That's because this is his recipe. This was part of my five TikToks that I tested out uh, video and all the other ones were just okay but this one was amazing probably because it was by Malcolm Reed from How to Barbecue Right and he is just I love everything he does really I do he just is a great cook great YouTube channel anyways here goes chorizo peppers onions that's why it's like a Mexican cheese steak it's got his grande gringo seasoning which is like a just a taco seasoning basically chorizo peppers onions cook up your chorizo chop it all up there and once it gets nice and cooked, then we're going to go ahead and move it over the peppers and onions in our warming zone. Then we're going to follow all of that up with more meat, like we don't have enough with the chorizo. There's our sh shaved beef, because it is a cheesesteak technically. So we're going to put down that shaved beef and break that all up. This is dual meat. We got the chorizo, we got the shaved beef. We got all the peppers and onions, and this is more of the traditional cheesesteak aspect. Now that I got the beef down, I'm just kind of breaking it apart. Still going to hit it up with more of that grande gringo, a lot of his seasoning in this one. And I, oh, I forgot to tell you about the liquid gold back in the corner. Got a little bit of uh, Velveeta back there. 
getting ready to go on top a little bit of that processed cheese here comes your traditional cheesesteak you know just kind of break up all your meat use your two spatulas break everything up break it down let it cook in its own fat there just keep getting it smaller and smaller there's a hoagie bun that we're putting down probably uh, two of them you know got to make one for the wife as well and then we're going to toast those up mix everything together both meats peppers onions plenty of seasoning toasting up our buns we got our cheese ready to go oh did i mention there's two cheeses this is why he's amazing because he just put two cheeses on there not one but two cheeses on this cheese steak put the buns on top wait for it to melt give it the old flip boom another great picture on the spatula but we're not done yet folks don't forget about that melty cheese in the back holy smokes i even added some jalapenos if you want to see that video i was talking about it's on your screen now thanks for watching keep on griddling friends